Okay, this is the Atwood machine. Um, and what I want to do is set up the physics. There's a whole bunch of different versions of these. I'm going to start off simple and make it more complicated. And it's going to be awesome. We're going to do like Atwood machine all over the place. So the basic idea is this. There's a pulley, uh, a spinning wheel, frictionless and zero mass. Yes, that's true. We'll add mass to it later. And on this pulley, I have two hanging masses. I have mass one hanging down here and this connected to a string over to mass two. And then I'll let it go. And in this case, I'm going to say mass one is greater than mass two. So we can already imagine what's going to happen, right? If I take these two Lego pieces that I don't know why they're attached together. Why did I just grab these two? There they go. Okay. So there's my two masses like right there. And if this one has more mass, um, we know that this one's going to move down and that one's going to move up. Um, will it accelerate? Uh, will it move at constant speed? Let's find out. Okay. So in a problem like this, the first step is to draw a force diagram for this mass. So I'm going to draw it right here. Uh, so mass one, there are there's one thing touching it and there's one thing not touching it. There's the gravitational force but with the interaction between the mass and the earth. It's not touching, but we can write the magnitude, the well, right as a vector. So here I have the downward gravitational force M1G, where G is the gravitational field. Now I also have the string is pulling on it, and I'm going to call that uh, T for tension. And I've put this one greater because I know what's going to happen. But if you're not sure, that's fine. You can draw them the same length or whatever you want to do. We'll all figure it out in a second. If I go over here to mass 2, um, it looks like this. I'm going to draw a smaller weight because it has a lower mass. Uh, now, it should have the same tension pulling up. Why? Well, this is the same string. Okay, so if I have a string, which I do right here, is this tied to something? Yeah. Well, I wish I had a good example of a string. So if you have a string and you pull on it, uh, since the string has very, very low mass, the, the tension on one side has to be the equal to the tension on the other side. The tension throughout the whole string is the same. Now the direction can change because the tension is always in the direction of the string. So in this case, the string's pulling up. In this case, the string's pulling up too. So um, there. So those two have the same magnitude but different directions. I've labeled them the same, which is a bad idea, but it's going to work. Okay, so now I can use Newton's second law. So if I write Newton's second law for this one, it's going to be in the y direction, f net y. It's going to be m1 a1. This is a1 y, the acceleration in the y direction. And what forces are in the y direction? We'll have a positive t minus m1 g. Now I don't know t and I don't know a, so even if I knew these masses, let's say that's um, you know 100 grams and that's 50 grams, I don't know. We, we can pick that if you want. m1 equals 100 grams, m2 equals 50 grams. And then we, we can use that. But I, I, I know that. I know g. g is uh, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. The magnitude of g is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And I put it minus because it's in the negative y direction. Now let's do the same thing for the other force, F net y. It's going to be uh, m2a2 equals t minus m2g. And so the equation looks the same. So you may think that's pointless. But there is one other thing. So I've used these two magnitudes the same. There's another trick that I have to use. Imagine that this moves down a centimeter. That has to move up a centimeter in the same amount of time. So because the string is perfect and doesn't stretch, the displacement of this in the negative y direction would be the same displacement as that in the positive y direction. So they'd have to have equal and opposite y velocities. If they have equal and opposite y velocities, they have to have equal and opposite accelerations. So I'm going to rewrite this as m2 times negative a1 equals t minus m2g. So the acceleration of this one has to be negative of that one. And in fact, maybe maybe I did that poorly. Whatever, I'm going to I'm going to stick with it cuz you know, you got to you got to make bad mistakes in life and you got to stick with it. And I'm sticking with my bad bad choice. 
uh, because this one's going to actually have a negative acceleration, so it's going to actually be negative of a negative, which is positive. But anyway, I now have two equations. I have this equation, and I have this equation, and I have two variables, t and a1. So I can solve two equations to unknowns. So let's take this one and solve it for t. So if I do that, I add m1g to both sides, I get t equals m1 g plus m1 a1. Now I can substitute this in up there and I get negative m2 a1 equals, now I'm going to put this in for t, m1 g, g plus m1 a1 minus m2 g. I want to get all the a terms on one side, so I'm going to subtract m1 a1 from both sides. I get minus m2 a1 minus m1 a1 equals now I have m1 g minus m2 g. So I'm going to write that as m1 minus m2 g. Now I can factor out the a1 out of this term and I get a1 times negative m2 minus m1 equals m1 minus m2 g. And now I can divide both sides by minus m1 minus m2 and I get a1 equals m1 minus m2 g over negative m2 minus m1. And I'm going to rewrite that. I'm going to say this is negative. I'm going to factor out a negative sign right there. Negative m1 minus m2 g over m1 plus m2. And that's my acceleration for a1. Um, so we, we can do a couple things here. First step is to check the sign. I already said that a1 should be negative. It should be accelerating down, which I'm, I'm pointing as moving down, but it could be moving up and accelerating down. So is this going to be a negative number? So m1 is greater than m2, so that's positive, and that's positive, and that's positive. So everything's positive except for that, so I do get a negative value. So that's that's good. Now what about the extreme, what about the case where the two masses are the same? Well then it should just, it should not accelerate at all, right? It's an, it's an equilibrium. So if m1 equals m2, then I get zero up top, and I get I get zero. That's good. And one more thing. What if this was like, five million kilograms and that was a micro kilogram then th this should just fall like free fall acceleration right so if m1 is much greater than m2 then the acceleration should be g so if i have m1 much greater than m2 then this is approximately m1 and this is approximately m1 so if m1 over m1 and i just get g negative g so that's that's true too so that's all good now let's put a value in because i i said i would do that so a1 is going to be equal to negative m1 100.1 minus 0 0.05 kilograms times 9.8 over their sum uh, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.05 so 0 0.15 and I'll put that in my calculator just for fun and I get 0 0.1 enter well, I can do this in my head 0 0.05 minus 9.8 times and then divided by 0.15 and I get 3.27 meters per second squared, negative. So that's the acceleration of this one, and now the other one accelerates up. Uh, now I can do one other thing. I can calculate the tension. Uh, so go back up here. T equals M1, so that's 0.1 times 9.8 plus M1, 0.1 times acceleration negative 3.27. So let's put that in the calculator. So I already have that, so I'm just going to change the sign, change sign, times 0.1, and then I'm going to add that to 0.1 enter 9.8 times plus. And I get 0 0.653 newtons. Compare that to the weight, right? Let's just check. So if I have a a 0.1 kilogram times 9.8, I get 0.98 newtons as the weight. This is the tension, which is less than the weight. And, and let me tell you, this is the mistake I made as an undergraduate. I looked at this and I said, oh, well, this tension would be equal to the weight over here, but it's not. The tension here is not equal to the weight over here uh, because uh, 
this is accelerating. The tension would be equal to the weight if this was in equilibrium, but it's not. This is accelerating up, so the tension's actually greater than the weight here, but less than this weight right here. And that's why this one accelerates down and that one accelerates up. And that is the Atwood machine problem. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of different versions of this. Uh, I'm gonna do some more because I want to and no one can stop me. And the end.